Um, hello. Um, good afternoon. Um, we're going to start um, open open shift comments to Edge Sig. Um, we're going to have um, Diego present to us today, and his topic is going to be deploy computer vision apps at the edge with MicroShift. So this is an amazing series that Diego has been putting on for us, and we look forward to all the, the valuable information that he's going to share with us. Um, Diego. Thank you so much. So yeah, hello everyone. Um, you already know me, but I'm Diego Alvarez. I'm Associate Technical Marketing Manager for Edge at Red Hat. And yeah, here starts the last episode of this uh, Computer Vision at the Edge series. So today we are going to take into account all we did on the previous episodes, and we are going to use it to build and deploy the Computer Vision application and then um, use it and see it working from the edge uh, on top of Microsheet. So before starting, I would like to do some recap um, as always. So if you remember, we had two different elements on, in our environment. We had the data center that we moved closer to the edge because well, we saw that we, there were some advantages uh, when we were training models uh, at the edge. Um, but also we had the edge device itself where we are going to run the application. So on the data center side, we deployed single node OpenShift because, well, typically you will uh, have a full cluster, but if we are moving everything to the edge, we have some resource constraints, limitations. So we had to go for a smaller uh, footprint and that's single node OpenShift um, that provides the same um, experience as a full cluster, uh, apart from not having high availability, for example. But yeah, we deploy single node OpenShift using the assisted installer. And uh, then we install the Red Hat OpenShift AI um, operator on top of it. So this is the platform that we were going to use to train the model. But before that, we had to provide some storage to the um, single node, and also we had to expose the GPU. So once we had the OpenCFI platform uh, installed and running, on the last episode, we labeled a custom data set with animal images. Um, so once we had the data set prepared, we imported it into OpenCFI, and we used those images and labels to train the YOLO uh, model. So that's the last thing we did on the last episode. Uh, for today, what we are going to do is using that model um, so it can be embedded into a containerized image. We are going to push that image into a registry, and then we are going to uh, start um, setting up the edge device. So for the edge device, there are two different approaches. The one that is shown on the demo is using OpenC virtualization, but also you can, of course, have another virtual machine outside the single node. Um, so I will show you both approaches. But yeah, we are going to install Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9.4. And on top of it, we are going to install Microsheet. So both um, components are part of Red Hat Device Edge. So before going into the demo, I would like to start talking a little bit about Red Hat Device Edge. So we all know that Edge could be different depending on the use cases, depending on the limitation and different scenarios. So it's, sometimes it's difficult to provide like a definition for it. So Red Hat device sets have to be flexible to provide um, different capabilities to cover all the different scenarios at the edge. So that's the idea of Red Hat device sets um, uses some Red Hat technologies to provide edge optimized capabilities to meet all the different uh, aspects and differences that we can see at the edge, like use cases, uh, different devices, um, limitations on ter in terms of resources, network, um, different location for those devices. But we have been talking about infrastructure, but also there are different uh, workload types that we will run at the edge. So Red Hat Device Edge also provides like a one standard platform for all the different uh, workload types like bare metal, uh, containerized workloads, virtualized um, application, and you can always orchestrate those with Polman um, using Kubernetes, in this case with Microsheet. And when we have, uh, the, when the environment starts growing and expanding 
and we start having more pods, more application running, we will need some kind of management and automation to, to manage all the application and the devices. So that's something that Red Hat Device Sets uh, is able to provide. So Red Hat Device Sets is, uh, or uses three different products. Uh, the first one and the base for everything is Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So we have like a solid uh, operating system with all the benefits of Red Hat Enterprise Linux as the base. And the design idea was to allow users to add the components that they need. So as I said, if we want to um, orchestrate Kubernetes, we will need a, a Kubernetes distribution and that's Microsheet. So Microsheet is Red Hat's lightweight Kubernetes distribution uh, for it. Um, with Microsheet, you can um, orchestrate containers um, with a small footprint. And as I said before, also when you, we need to uh, manage different workloads and different devices, you need some kind of uh, automation um, that's, that comes from Ansible. So those are the three products that are included, that are included with Red Hat devices. In this demo, we are only using Red Hat Enterprise Linux and Microsheet. So that's the one that I want to um, talk a little bit more. So this is the design of um, Red Hat Device Edge with Microsheet. As I said, uh, we can run Red Hat Device Edge on physical, virtual, the cloud, and the edge, of course. And we have the base operating system that could be Red Hat Enterprise Linux with the RPM um, binaries or uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux for it, um, the OS3 based uh, approach with all the features that already comes with this operating system, like security over there, updates, some kind of monitoring and logging. And then if we want to have a Kubernetes layer, orchestration layer, we need to install Microsheet. So Microsheet give us the possibility to orchestrate those containers, uh, but also provide some other services like networking, ingress, and also the operator lifecycle manager that could be installed as optional. Um, but yeah, the idea is that Microsoft is not OpenShift, although you can uh, deploy uh, the same workloads, but the lifecycle could be difficult. But yeah, uh, Microsoft and OpenShift shares uh, some parts of code, uh, for example, the same networking stack and the storage, for example, also is quite similar. Um, but yeah, that's the basic um, like design of Red Hat Device Edge and Microsheet. Um, so now that we know all this, I think we can jump to the demo itself. So if you remember, we finished our last meeting with the model training. So this was my notebook uh, that I ran um, on OpenCF AI. So here we had all the data set that we labeled before we train the model using that data. And we obtained some weights file that is um, here. And we use that weights file to validate the model. So this file contains all the information so the YOLO model can understand and recognize the animals that we uh, specified during the training. So as we saw, the model was working quite well and it was able to detect the brown bear uh, bear with high precision. Um, so the last step we did was exporting this model into ONNX format. So that's a, a standard um, extension so we can transport the model uh, to the edge. So yeah, when we converted it into ONX, uh, the results were saved in the train weights uh, best ONX file. So that's what we have here. And the first step will be downloading this file because that's the file we are going to embed into the container image. So let me see if I can download. Okay, here it starts. But yeah, we will need this uh, model into a container image because we don't want to have the model running on a server and then sending um, the detections from the server to the edge. So we want everything running uh, locally on the edge. 
So that's what we are going to do um, this way. We are going to embed this model directly into the container image that will run on the X device. So we have here the um, ONNX file, and we are going to um, move it to the uh, application folder. So this is my application folder. Here I have all the um, files that I need to build this image. So if I want to use Podman build, of course, I will need a container file. And this container file will use all the different um, files that are, that are stored here of those folders. So the first step will be moving this. Um, well, actually, let me uh, re rename the, the download. So CD download. So mm, I'm going to rename this as Okay, and now I'm going to go back. I'm going to switch to my app folder, and I'm going to move this um, best ONNX uh, file to the static folder. So this is on the downloads um, best ONNX, and I'm going to move it to this folder static. Okay, so you now if we go to a static. We should see here the best ONX file with the model. Um, so we can start building the application. So instead of showing you the files from the terminal, I have opened um, the same folder on my uh, on this environment. So here we have the container file. Um, we needed to build the the application. So the base image we are going to use is an um, UBI9 plus Python image. We're going to set up the working directory. We are going to install some dependencies and the requirements for the YOLO model. And finally, we are going to copy all the contents in this uh, app and this folder into the working directory. And the last step will be running the AppPI script. So let's take a look to this uh, script. Uh, as you can see, it's quite simple. All we are doing here is importing some uh, packages, and we are starting a Flask server. So we are using this Flask server because we want to access the application from a graphical interface that is going to be running uh, at the edge. So we start the Flask server, um, and this Flask server is going to render the template that is stored in the templates index HTML. And here is where all the logics for the graphical interface are defined. So we have here the name for the application, the structure for the graphical interface, but also we are specifying here the video input that we are going to use uh, to recognize the animals. And also here we are specifying the object detector uh, JavaScript code where the basically the magic happens. So here in this object detector uh, folder uh, file, we'll see all the logics uh, to start using our YOLO model. So let's take a look to it. Um, as you can see here, we are specifying the data set classes. Those are the ones that I showed you on the last episode. Um, and here starts all the logics for this um, application. Basically, when I press the play button, um, it will take the first frame of the video and it's going to prepare it uh, so it can be uh, used from the model. So once the uh, first frame is uh, prepared, we are going to use a worker uh, to detect the animals on that frame. So we are using a different uh, script, a worker, because we wanted to avoid overloading the same thread. Um, so we split uh, the task into two different uh, files. So yeah, as I said, we are sending the image to the worker. So if we take a look to the worker, um, we see that what we do is running the model and this function is going to use the, the model that we just downloaded um, to detect the animal. 
So, so that was the reason why we had to import the ONNX file here, because we're going to use it locally uh, to detect uh, animals on each frame of the video. So once we have the detections and the labels, we are going to send all the outputs back to the object detector. And now we are going to do some, um, like, uh, we're going to get some statistics from those. So we are going to get the label that comes from the worker. And we are going to look up for this label in this CSV uh, file that I created. So this CSV file has all the animals that we saw. And I added uh, like the location, a description, and everything. So we are going to look up for the first label. And we are going to complete the rest of the fields with uh, all the descriptions, uh, habitat, etc. So that's the idea, and that's why we had to um, detect the animals and use the label for. And so, yeah, that's the application. Um, and that's the reason why we had to embed this model here. So now that we know how it works, uh, we can start building the image. So I'm going to do it uh, from here. I'm in the app application, and the first thing will be Podman. Um, build. I'm going to tag this image to match my Quai repository. So that will be quai.io, the Alvare. Oh, there's a typo here. And we are going to uh, provide a name for this application. Let's call it app. This is the tag, the latest. And we're going to specify uh, the path from it will from where it will start uh, creating the image. So this is the current uh, path. So it's going to look up for the container file to start building the, the image. So let's run this. And it should take a little bit um, to complete all the steps. So usually you will uh, need more time to build this image. But as I did before, I already have some of the layers already downloaded, for example, and the uh, requirements already installed. So that's the reason why it took um, less time than usual. So now if I do Podman uh, images, I can see here the app that I just created. So that's it. Uh, the next step will be just pushing this application into the Quai repository. Uh, for this, we are going to do Podman push and the name of the image. And here we're going to start uh, uploading the image to the Quai uh, registry. So it has finished. So we can, we should be able to see it from the Quai repository. That's my Quai repository. And here we have the application. Here we can see the latest tag that was uploaded a few seconds ago. So in order to be consumed from the edge, I'm going to make this repository public. Uh, we go to settings, make public. And that's it. So as a summary, uh, we downloaded the model that we trained before. We embedded it into a container eyes image. And we push, we build and push that image into Quai so it can be consumed right now uh, from the edge. So that was the first part. Um, so now we can focus on the edge device itself. So as I told you before, uh, there are two different approaches. I will show you both of them. So the one that is explained on the demo is using OpenSea virtualization. Um, so we are going to use a virtual machine to emulate the edge device as we don't have one uh, uh, handle here. So we are going to go to the OCP web console. If you remember, we have here all the operators uh, that I showed you before. We provide the storage, GPU operator, the non feature discovery, and OpenCFI, of course. And we are going to install another one, and that's uh, OpenSea virtualization. Uh, OpenShift. virtualization. 
Okay, as always, uh, we don't need to modify any of those parameters. We can go with the default values and we press install. So right now we are installing the operator and in a couple of uh, seconds, we will need to install the operand itself. Um, so yeah, let's wait a couple of seconds. Um, we can always track the deployments from the pods. Uh, uh, that, but yeah, uh, we will see all of them running once we create the the um, operator. Um, one second, install operators. Okay, here we have the open virtualization operator. Now we need to create the hyperconverged custom resource. Again, we can keep the default values here. But as you can see, you can uh, modify a lot of the parameters for the virtual machines. Um, but in this case, we are not going to change anything. So create again. So if you take a look to the menu on the left side, you can see that there are no um, virtualization tabs here. But it's something that will be created when the operand uh, finishes the installation. So I will let you know as soon as we uh, need to refresh the, the page to add this stuff here. But um, yeah, we can track the deployment from here. Go to the project, OpenShift CMV. We can see some of the bots are running and some other will be created. Um, but yeah. Let's wait a couple of seconds there to see the operator running, and then we can start uh, creating a virtual machine. Okay, some of them are complete. Others are initializing. And here we have the pop-up um, message that is asking us to update the refresh the web console. So we are going to refresh it, and here we will see the virtualization tab. Here it is, um, we have the virtualization tab. Um, so here is where we are going to create the virtual machines. So we can create virtual machine from this button and we can select instance type or templates. I'm going to do it uh, from a template. So here we have different templates that we can use with different operating system. Um, if we wait a couple of uh, minutes, we will see that some of these um, templates will have a boot source. This means that the PVC that is underneath each uh, operating system will be already configured with the operating system itself. So yeah, if we go to storage, we should see here some PVCs uh, starting to be created and attaching those operating system with each template. But if we don't want to wait, we can always do it uh, manually. So I'm going to select the rel 9 VM. And here we have lots of different parameters that we can configure. Of course, we can select the CPU and the memory. I can add more resources if needed. Let's save them. I can change the virtual machine name. I will call it Edge. I can uh, modify the password for the cloud user. Uh, in this case, Red Hat, one, two, three. The disk size, 40, and the disk source. Um, so if we wait uh, those minutes, the template default will install uh, the operating system um, automatically. But also we can specify the image that we want to embed into the PVC. Uh, with this option, URL creates PVC, and we need to specify here the, the software that we want to download into the PVC. So I'm going to open this link, and as I will be installing Microsoft for the system, I will need uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9.4. So this is the version that we need, and uh, as I'm going to create a VM, 
I will get this image. So copy link address and we can paste it here. So those are the things that we need to modify. Always we can also create uh, or attach new volumes, for example, like storage to add more storage. Uh, we go to us this, we can add a new disk. And as you can see, the storage class was the default one that we configured during the first or second episodes. So we are adding here another extra disk and we can create the virtual machine. So that's how easy you can create a virtual machine from OpenShift uh, with OpenShift virtualization. If we go to diagnostics, we should be able to see how these PVCs are being populated with the operating system that we specify from this page. So yeah, um, right now we'll start the uh, population and we'll start downloading all the contents into those PVCs. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, what we can do is start also configuring a microchip. So as I told you, we can use OpenSea virtualization um, to create the virtual machine, but also if we want to have a virtual machine outside our single node, for example, we can create uh, other virtual machines in our laptop, for example. So that's what I did here. I already have a virtual machine with RHEL 9.4 installed. So this is my virtual machine that is running on my laptop locally. So it's not on the same host as a single node OpenShift. So if I run this, Uh -huh. Release. You can see that I have my REL 9.4 operating system installed here. Okay, so next step will be installing Microsoft. Um, so that's why I have here the Microsoft documentation, just to show you how easy it is to set up Microsoft. So in a couple of minutes, maybe 10 minutes or so, you will have Microsoft running on your virtual machine. So the first step always is to register the real machine that is already done. Um, so right now we are going to enable those repositories. So we need to enable those repositories because all the Microsoft binaries and packages are stored here. So now that we are going to do DNF install Microsoft, um, we will need those uh, repositories enabled so it can be uh, found all the packages. So let's uh, wait one second. And here we have both repository enabled. Okay, so next step. Now we can install the binaries. So I'm going to copy this command and I'm going to paste it here. So it will depend on your internet connection, um, but in order to accelerate the process, I already installed all the packages before. Um, so we don't need to wait for all of them to be downloaded, but yeah. You just need to do DNF install Microsoft and you will get all the packages and binary from its uh, two repositories. So the next step uh, will be um, downloading the OpenSeed uh, pull secret. We will need this OpenSeed pull secret when we start the Microsoft service because we will need to pull some uh, images and we need to authenticate against those registries with this OpenSeed pull secret. So I will go to the hybrid cloud console and we can download this uh, pull secret from this uh, web page. This is the same web page we use for the assisted installer installation, for example. So yeah, you will have all the different features or 
different things that you need for each OpenSIF Microsoft installation, all on the same um, web page. So we should see here the full secret. But yeah, my internet connection is quite low today. Let's see. I'm going to refresh the page. Oh no, it was not needed. Here we have the full secret. Uh, we can download it from here. That's our full secret. So now we can go back to the um, documentation and we need to copy that full secret into the ETC cryo uh, folder. So it can be detected uh, when the microchip uh, service starts. So let's do it. In my case, I will need to modify this name. The name was full secret text file. And we can find it on the downloads folder. OK, now we copied um, the full secret on this ETC cryo folder. And we are going to uh, need to assign the root user um, to this file. So the owner will be root. And also, we are going to provide the root user write and read uh, privileges on this file. That's it. And the last step will be uh, enabling the firewall. So this is something that I already did, but we are going to run the commands because it will not hurt anyone. So yeah, as you can see, it's already enabled. We are going to see if the second uh, zone is also enabled here. And finally, we are going to reload the firewall service. OK, that's it. So <clears throat> yeah, we have everything set up. Um, so the next step will be starting the Microsoft service. So if we take a look to the documentation, we can see that there are some other features that we can enable, like the operator lifecycle manager, as I told you. So right now, you can also install um, operators on Microsoft using this uh, feature. Also, you can enable GitOps um, on Microsoft in case you want to keep some tracking on your uh, versionings, etc. And finally, you can also uh, enable Multus in case you want to attach new networks to pods. But in this case, we will not need any of them. So we can go directly to the next step, and that will be starting Microsoft. And as this is the first time we are doing this, it will take longer to download all the images from the registry. So we should expect um, we will need to wait a couple of minutes here. But if this is not the first time you are starting Microsoft, um, it will be uh, easier and faster. So yeah, let's wait for Microsoft to come up. Um, in the meantime, we can take a look to the virtual machine that we were creating here. If you remember, we were in the diagnostic page because we wanted to see how the operating system that we specified was imported. So here we can see that it succeeded and we have the operating system already in the PVC. So if we go to PVCs, we can see both of them, the empty disk that we specify uh, and also the PVC for the virtual machine with the operating system. OK, so the virtual machine should be ready. Yeah, here we have it running. 
so we can access the console from this um, page. Here you can see that the REL 9.4 operating system was detected. That's the one that we specify. We have the CPU and the memory we configured during installation. So we can access the web console from here. Now we are connecting to the web console and here we have our virtual machine. So I always change this. Instead of using the VNC console, I use the serial console. But the first thing we need to do here is login. Here you can see all the, the credentials. Um, the cloud user is the default username and the password that we provided uh, during the installation. So this will be cloud user and the password will be Red Hat. Next. And now we are logged into the virtual machine. So that's why I told you that it's the same in case you want to install uh, open virtualization. If you want to run a microchip, you can do it on virtualization or in a VM outside your system. Because right now, if you want to deploy Microsoft here, all you need to do is following the same documentation that we follow here. Um, so yeah, let's see what happened here. Um, now I'm going to focus only on the virtual machine um, because the steps will be similar. I think it failed because of my internet connection. It took too long. So let's start it again. I'm going to start by closing some of the tabs. I don't know if you can still hear me or see my screen because I can barely move in my environment. Yep. We yeah, can okay. Still see you. Uh, let me see if I can close. We are going to, we are not going to need this code uh, anymore. We already pushed the image, so we will not need it. And also we can close this. Okay, so it's failing. Let me see if I miss any of the steps. Um, firewalls, CMD reloads. Okay, I think we still have some time. Uh, I'm going to try to delete the deployment and do it again. Um, so if we want to delete Microsheep, we can do sudo Microsheep in app data. Let me see if this works. Oh, yeah, of course, the command is not found because Microsoft is not enabled yet. And there's a typo in the cleanup, in fact. Sorry. Oh, oh yeah. Clean. Think. Oh, yeah, we can use it. Oh, so let's delete. We are stopping the Microsoft services um, here. We are going to delete all the configuration we did, and we are going to try to do it uh, again. But yeah, I think it was failing. Um, if I didn't miss any of the steps, I think it failed because my internet connection, as you could see, everything was uh, stuck. So, but yeah, I did it a couple of times before and it worked just following the documentations, quite straightforward. So let's try to do it again live. If, if not, I already have another virtual machine so we can focus on the deployment.
Okay, let's start again. Um, let's start by enabling the repositories. I think from here, Diego, you can uh, start the service again. Let's try it. You should, you should have still the file, the, 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 the pool secret should be still be there. Okay. And also the firewall should be configured. So let's do it. Yeah, just saying because I'm a uh, half user of Microsoft cleanup data in my labs as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Wait. I'm going to uh, Okay, let's do it again. In the meantime, I'm going to fire up another virtual machine that I already have in Microsoft running just to show you how the application is deployed in case this uh, fails again. Oh, yeah, in the meantime, maybe let's take a look to where we are right now. So we downloaded the model, we embedded it into the container image. This image is on the repository. So now we are setting up the Edge device. We have RHEL already installed, and we are installing Microsoft on top of it. So now with Microsoft, we should be able to um, deploy the uh, application itself with just a deployment. We are going to expose that deployment to create a service, and we are going to expose the service to create a, a route to access the application. So that's what we are trying to do here. So Microsoft is still starting. This is a new virtual machine. Okay, so my laptop is running quite low um, right now. Okay, so now Microsoft should be ready. Um, so let's continue with the steps. So the next step will be uh, configuring the cube config so we can access the cluster locally. So we need to create this cube folder where we are going to um, copy the cube config file. Okay, that's the folder. And now let's move the cube config from the Microsoft folder to the cube folder that we just created. Great. And finally, let's update the permissions for this uh, uh, file.
Great. So if everything is correct, we should be able to see some pods starting. So we can now run OC get pods in all namespaces. And here we have the pods that Microsoft is uh, deploying um, to start using this Kubernetes layer. So we can see some of them for storage, the network configuration, the ingress, the DNS, and the cube system. Um, so yeah, let's do watch OC get pods. So we see uh, the progress of all of them. So for now, it seems like now it's working. Um, so I said, it's, as I said, it was quite easy to uh, install it uh, if you don't have any internet issues. So I'm going to stop this other virtual machine as probably we will not need it. Okay, we can see some pods are running and some others are failing because they are waiting for other pods to come up. Um, so yeah, let's wait a couple of minutes and we will see all of them running. So I think we can close this window because the Microsoft installation is complete. And I'm going to show you uh, how the application is deployed. So I'm going to open a new terminal window. And here I have uh, my application folder with the deployment, JAMA. So let's take a look at the deployment, being deployment, JAMA. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. But this is all you need for the deployment um, to deploy an application. So as you can see, it's quite simple. The, it will be a deployment. The name will be Safari. And we are going to pull the image that we uploaded to the wide repository. So that's the reason why we had to upload it um, into Kuwait. So if you want to deploy your own application, you just need to change this uh, sentence. Uh, instead of using my repository, you can use yours and the application you want to deploy. And we are going to export also the port uh, 5,000, and that's all you need. So yeah, we can close this jam. And once we have all the pods running, we can start with the deployment. So yeah, again, apologize because, well, this is something quite easy that you can do it in 10 minutes, but as I'm sharing my screen uh, in the same, at the same time, it's taking longer. And sometimes it fails because it has to wait uh, for a long time. Um, but yeah, it's quite straightforward and you will not uh, have any issues installing Microsoft. So let's keep uh, waiting um, more time. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, we can review the blog post. So as a reminder, we have all the blog posts in the Red Hat Developer um, blog. So this is the last episode, but you can access all the different um, episodes that we saw before from the index. And here I, it is where I explain how to do it on OpenSea virtualization. That's what we did. We deployed OpenSea virtualization. We waited for the pods to come up. And then we um, deployed the, created the rel 9.4 VM. So as I said, you need to register your rail machine. And then here is a step that is different. Um, as in my virtual machine outside the host, I installed the server uh, with graphical interface. 
But when you install this from um, OpenSea virtualization, you will need to specify that you want to install the, the graphical interface um, version. So that's the first step, installing the graphical interface version. Um, but then you will need to do the same steps. So enabling the repositories, installing MicroShift, um, moving the full secret to the etc cryo folder, provide the, um, the right permissions to the root users, and then enable MicroShift. And another thing that is different in this case is uh, the OVN configuration, because MicroShift uh, by default expects a um, maximum transfer unit uh, of 1,500, uh, but part of this MTUs is used for encapsulation uh, with OPC virtualization. So the result is that the MTU, the real MTU uh, in this virtual machine is smaller. In this case is 1,400. So you need to change that value on the Microchip uh, configuration, um, but yeah, just open this uh, file, I specify the new MTU and restart the service. And then again, to access the cluster, create the cube folder, move the cube config and provide the right permission. And you will get uh, the same pods running. So that's why it's quite easy uh, to understand because we have both approaches, but basically both of them are quite similar. Um, so yeah, that's what was um, explained on the blog post. Um, yeah, we are still waiting for some of the pods to come up. Um, I think we don't have a lot of time. So again, I will try to spin up the other virtual machine and see if we can deploy the application there. If not, you will need to believe me and I will show you how it's done from the video. Yeah, in the meantime, are there any questions until this point? Um, I don't know if everything is clear, uh, although we had to go back and forward a couple of times. Um, Diego, amazing presentation. Awesome. Yeah, thanks. Apologize because it didn't work everything at the first uh, try, but yeah, we are trying to make it work. Live. Thank you, Diego. Want me to stop the recording? Uh, well, maybe I can. The last thing we can do is showing the uh, application deployment from the video as we don't have much more time. So, yeah. Sounds great. This is the video that is uh, at the end of the blog post. And here you can see the same uh, deployment that we saw before. So all you need to do is um, deploy in the um, deployment YAML. It will create the deployment. Now we are going to expose this deployment uh, so it can create the service. And as you can see, this service uh, has a cluster IP and that's the IP that we are going to reach uh, to access the application. Finally, we are going to expose this service to create a route. And that's the route that is created, Safari default apps example .com. So in order to access the application from the um, from Google Chrome, we need to add this entry to the DNS. So that's the IP from the service, and we need to map it uh, with the route that it that we created. So finally, the last step will be um, well here. I'm opening the graphical. Uh, interface uh, from my virtual machine and all we need to do is go to the um, Google Chrome try to search this Safari default application and always remember to attach the port that we expose and this is the application um, so 
as I told you, we are using this YOLO model here to detect the animals. We are using the label to get the information for each animal. And you can see that the uh, bounding boxes and the animal detector are um, preloaded on each frame. So yeah, this was the application. I mean, for me, the most important part was to explain how you deploy applications uh, from a data center to the edge. So it doesn't matter what application you use. It doesn't matter what model you are using here. Um, the important is to understand how easy it is to do it and to start uh, looking your own opportunities and uh, start testing your own applications. So that was the application that we couldn't see here. Let's see. Yeah, we still have some bots uh, creating. So I'm going to finish my speech here. Um, so always remember that you have here all the different uh, episodes, all the different videos. So if you miss some of them, you can always uh, read and watch the videos for each step on this demo. And again, thanks again for having me here during uh, this month uh, and a half, I think. Um, yeah, it was a pity I could then show you the application running uh, live, but yeah, that's what happens when we are sharing at the same time we are doing a live demo. But yeah, again, thanks for having me here. Hey, thank you. It was an amazing series. Um, we, we look forward to having more of these. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. Again, uh, I will try to um, improve our at least practice a little bit when I'm sharing my screen because it's completely different when I'm sharing um, the how it, everything is deployed and the internet connection. So yeah, when I am offline, everything works. But now that I'm sharing, everything crashes. But yeah, the steps are the same for both. Um, so yeah, I hope it was clear at least. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, that was great.